It would be a massive mistake to quit your job right now and start a web design hustle. That's because you could do it with only seven hours per week. So before you quit your job and start a side hustle, you need to be strategic and you need to take a calculated risk. So in this video, I'm gonna show you everything you need to know about starting a web design business in just seven hours per week. And I'm also gonna share with you my favorite trick to come off as like authoritative and trustworthy, even if you've never built a website before or don't have a portfolio. I'm also gonna show you how to get your first client or maybe your next client and some of the challenges you might face along the way and how I would overcome them. So the best part about the side hustle is you don't need to be an expert to get started, especially with platforms like Squarespace and Duda. They have amazing templates. It's super easy to use. Like these are some Duda templates and it's so easy to get started. You just click one, you change out the information and they look really amazing. Like they're not basic sites whatsoever. And then same thing with Squarespace. They have so many different templates that you could just grab one of these and start customizing it right away. These website builders make it super easy to start a web design side hustle with just seven hours per week between starting with the template, but then just actually working within them. It's so easy to change the website and, and get it out there and get it launched. So that's partially why this works in seven hours a week. But the other reason is that clients don't have hard deadlines. I mean, very rarely have I come across a project where they're like, we need this by a certain date because like they have an event or something like that. But all in all, clients are just like, whenever it gets done, it gets done. You know, we just want it to be done right. And then beyond it not having like a hard deadline, you don't need to work within the actual like hours or the typical hours that like your client might be working within you can easily work evenings or weekends you do need to interface with them at all you could just send emails they'll get to them when they can but you don't need to be working the exact same hours as your clients which makes this a perfect side hustle and the last reason i think this works really well is it's because it's in crazy demand i mean everybody needs a website and there's so many businesses that actually don't have a website or they just have like a super crappy website so they need you all right let's talk about getting started now the better you are at web design the easier this is going to get but i'm going to teach you a little trick that's going to kind of take you out of this catch 22. Now for me, on the absolute majority of my sales calls, people don't ask to see my portfolio. It rarely happens. And if they do ask, it somehow just becomes a thing where I just don't end up showing them because I'm able to build trust on the call. And you might think, well, great, you've been doing this for over 10 years. So you can talk intelligently about SEO, copywriting, design, uh, you know, the, the formatting of the website or whatever it might be, but you actually don't need any of that. So one of the things that I often have to remind myself on the sales call, and this is a part of the trick, is you don't want to offer much value. And this seems so counterintuitive. When you are in this discovery call, understanding what the client needs, you're going to feel the pressure to prove your worth to, you know, add a little bit of information there or a little bit of strategy here and there. And there's so many times where the client or the, uh, the person is saying something that I'm just like, oh, I really want to tell them about this, like one thing that can really help them, but I don't say anything. In fact, I only ask questions and I let them do the absolute majority of the talking, maybe like 80% of the time. And by asking the right questions and being a good listener, you build trust with them. Now having a portfolio doesn't hurt. So I'm gonna share with you four ways that you can get your first client. All right, this is one I've advocated for in the past and I think it's because it works really well. And I'm excited to share it with you. The idea is you build a free website for somebody, but not just anybody. You don't wanna build it for your friend that's starting a business. You wanna build it for a business that's already established, somebody that's stable, somebody that has a lot of clients, preferably somebody that's a little bit more recognizable in like your niche, maybe it's a local business. And that's because referrals are huge. I get so much business from referrals and the bigger and the more established the business, the more referrals you're going to actually get from them. Also, if you can get a testimonial, that's going to be huge because it's not only a testimonial, but it might be from somebody that's recognizable in your area. So even though you're building the website for free, you're potentially getting a testimonial out of it, but you're also gaining skills skill sets, you're improving your processes, and you're getting a website in your portfolio. So to say that it's free, I don't really like to look at it like that because you are actually getting a lot of value out of building this website. All right, number two, it's not something I've done before, but it's something that I have definitely purchased. And that is services off of Fiverr or Upwork, or there's other platforms out there like Etsy, and you can list your services and make a really compelling reason why they should use you. And this is true regardless of like whether or not you're listing on Fiverr or not. That's because the more niche you are, the more attractive you're going to be for that person in the niche. It's just going to be a much easier sale when you say like, I am the pro at yoga websites or whatever it might be. All right, number three, this one may be reserved 
deserved if you have a little bit more experience, but you're gonna wanna partner with other designers. For example, I often get leads that I am not going to take on and I need to refer them out to somebody else. They might just not be aligned with what I'm taking. It might be the wrong industry. It just might be the wrong fit. Whatever the reason, if you are in the industry, you are likely getting leads and people that want your services, but you can't take them on for whatever reason. So you can offer to take those leads from whatever designer business that you are partnered with and you can even offer them a finder's fee. So hey, you send me some business, I will send you a little money back for referring me the business. This is very common in many industries. And number four, similar to the previous one, but you wanna partner with complementary businesses. So maybe it's a copywriter, maybe it's an SEO, maybe it's an IT company, uh, like a logo designer, something like that where they are working with your ideal client, but they're offering very similar services. So you can complement one another and same thing, they can refer business to you and you can send them a finder's fee. All right, I wanna give you some words of caution because there's so many videos online about like making money online, this and that, and I don't wanna fall into the trap of it being like an easy thing to do or oversimplify any of this. At the end of the day, persistence is key. You're gonna fail a lot or you're not gonna be able to like find that client or deliver successfully or whatever it might be, but you just gotta keep that forward momentum going. And so, you know, I like to remind myself just to stay focused and remember what I'm trying to achieve. So maybe set some goals, some high level goals of why you're in this, because in the beginning, it's gonna be very easy to wanna quit because you're just not making progress or it just doesn't feel like you're getting anywhere. But the fact is once you get going, it's easier to stay going. Once you start getting clients, it's easier to get clients. So it's a little bit of a catch 22, but stay focused and work hard and then you will be able to achieve this. I wanna show you how easy it is to fit in seven hours in your week. I mean, this is a little bit obvious, but like it's actually pretty cool to mess around with some different scenarios as you're excited to get started. So we have a week, this uh, calendar starts on Monday. We can obviously do one hour per day and that's it. I really don't like working in small chunks. And once I get working, I wanna just like stay working. It's also more efficient, you get more stuff done. So what I would do is I would probably pack in a lot of time on a Saturday, maybe like four hours, work like a half day on Saturday and then scatter in the rest of the few hours during the week, maybe an hour on Sunday and that's that. I mean, four hours on a Saturday isn't bad at all, especially when you're learning and you're enjoying this stuff and it's important to like, like it, like learning, like building stuff online. The time will go by so fast and you'll enjoy it. So seven hours is super easy to fit into a calendar no matter what job you're working or what hours you already have going on, you can easily fit in seven hours during your week. Now the second trap people fall into is wasting a lot of money and they spend a lot of money on stuff they really don't need. It's kind of like the shiny object syndrome where they start to get involved in, in some other thing they think is important to their business and it distracts them from what's important. You don't need a logo, you don't need a website, you don't need a custom email, you just need to start emailing people if that's the way you wanna do it, offering them a website, you know, developing your offer and sending that out to people. Now some of those things I mentioned don't hurt if you have a beautiful website, that might help build credibility, but I've converted people with terrible websites before, so it's really not important. You really just need to start doing what matters and that's getting in front of people. And once you get in the groove, the entire process will become more streamlined. You'll be able to take on clients with ease. You might even have specific questions to ask them. You might even put them in a form and you'll know the timelines it'll take to finish a website and how much to charge, and you'll have no problem doing this within seven hours per week. But once you charge them, you might think that you're done earning money from that client. And in fact, in this next video, I go over a way that I make over $1,000 a month in pretty passive revenue from my existing web design clients.